Hey, what's up guys? So, the mail came. Uh, this got shipped out two-day priority mail on March 31st, and it showed up today, April 12th. Whatever, it's here. So I just put this in the uh, G35 here and uh, charged the batteries because they were both dead. So um, now it's time to do the big thing, which is put it in the S13, see if it makes it work. I'm sure it does, because Hexa knows what they're doing, but here we go. So, as you guys can see, the VQ works again, so that's pretty exciting. Um, gotta go get the batteries charged because for whatever reason they have like zero cold crank amps. So, uh, yeah, definitely gotta take those both over to the auto store and get them charged up so I don't have to jump it with the G35 because, yeah, it shouldn't really be a thing. So, yeah, I'm gonna get these batteries out and grab the battery from the G35 and throw them in this G35 and get over to the auto store. So, uh, yeah. Well, this is really good progress though. I haven't seen this thing run in months, so that makes me feel really good inside to see it running again. Okay, so a bit of a weird one here. The EC started up the VQ once and now it won't start it up again. So I'm gonna go and change the cam and crank sensors to uh, eliminate those from being a possibility, but it works just fine on the G. So uh, it did start this one once, you, you guys saw it. So just gotta make sure uh, I, didn't, I don't have any uh, cheap cam or crank sensors in there. I don't think I do, but We'll see. All right, so I had to replace the cam and crank sensors on this thing because I'm pretty sure I took off my OEM crank sensor and brought it over to Tyler's house when we were working on the Z. So I took out the crank sensor and it was definitely one of those cheap Amazon or eBay ones. It wasn't a Hitachi. Um, Hitachi has a little logo on it so you can always identify if it's an OEM or an OEM replacement. Um, so yeah, I replaced those and now the car fires up just fine, works great. So now I'm over here messing with this again because I need to get my MAF set up on the cold side so I can run a proper blow through system. So I got my cold pipe right here and I got my Z32 MAF there. So I, uh, I measured on the uh, pipe, you know, by taking the MAF, lining it up and just putting a little notch on each side. And then um, because it's a circle, you know, it's really hard to draw an even line all the way around. So what I did is I took a V-band clip and I lined it up with the mark and I just drew a line around it. Now you are only able to draw the line halfway because it's got this little like whatever you want to call that on the side the lip so you do it uh, uh, do it halfway and then turn the clip around and then you can do the other side so uh now that i got these all marked up properly i'm gonna cut the pipe and then get my math on there and then i'll worry about wiring in a few minutes now i do not have a bench vise so uh i'm gonna have to secure this thing with uh c-clamps so um let's see how this goes Alright, so I got the Z32 MAF plug all wired in. Uh, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is go on order of this one, skip the two outside plugs, and then wire up the second one to a ground. So uh, I'll leave the uh, diagram down in the description so if you're doing this yourself, you can uh, click and look that one over. It was probably the easiest one um, out of all the ones I looked at. And there's not really any YouTube videos on how to wire it up. So um, yeah. So once you get this right here grounded out to your chassis, then it'll be all good to run. But um, I need to go to the store and get some electrical tape and then wire harness wrap, which I'll have to order online because they don't sell that anywhere. Um, and then I'll get this all wired back together or uh, loomed back together and then it'll be good to go. So that's another thing off the checklist. Got the blow through math on, got the wire, got the plug wired in. So that's good. So 
now that I got this thing running again, I figured it'd be a good time to um, get the coolant leak that I've been having. It's a very small coolant leak figured out. Um, I thought that it might have been my VQ crossover pipe and where it connects to the middle of the engine block. Um, so I took that all out last night and I RTV'd it back up and then I put the coolant pressure tester on my system and I'm still getting a leak. So I sat here and looked around and looked around, come to find out it's this little tiny bung on the bottom of my overflow tank. So I took off my whole manifold and ripped up my RTV job for absolutely no reason. So now I get to just take the thing off the, the overflow and just um, JB weld it in because uh, yeah, I'm not trying to keep having this issue and uh, who knew it was something so simple. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, put the intake manifold back on and then I'm gonna take off this reservoir, uh, repair the reservoir, and then we should be good to go. All right, so uh, let's run that back a minute. So uh, I thought I found the coolant leak and um, it's one of them. It's not really that serious of one. I'm still gonna repair it, but uh, I actually found what the real problem was. Um, I'm not too thrilled about it, but at least I found it, right? So. Um, I'm going to show you guys my other VQ block that I got over here so I can explain to you what, what's going on. So there's a drain plug right here and I took mine out because this whole engine was flooded with stop leak. Um, so when I put it back in, I guess I didn't like put it back in very well. So, uh, so yeah, it's just dripping coolant out of it. Um, so I got to take off the header and once I get the header off, I should have access to it pretty easily. Um, sucks that it's on the side where the header is kind of a pain to take off, but, um, you know, at least I found it and at least my whole exhaust system isn't fabbed up and welded on. So it's not going to like, it's not going to be that difficult. It's just going to be kind of a pain in the ass because everything runs through right here. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to get that taken off. I'm going to get it tightened up and then I'm going to put pressure back on the system and see if it's still leaking. Um, worst case scenario, I'll have to take it out and let the, the block drain and then I'll JB weld it. Um, which probably wouldn't be a bad idea because then I'll never have to worry about it um, But yeah, so I'm gonna get to that and uh, let you guys know when I finish up So yesterday while uh, I was fixing the coolant leak I decided to be a good time to paint my upper plenum and it had turned out really good And then I went to go drop off my coolant pressure tester and came back and laid the third coat of clear coat and it turned to orange peel central so uh, I have to strip the whole thing down and paint it again however I'm not like super upset about it because the whole thing's already like polished out and it's clean um, and then I got primers so I'm gonna load up some primer onto it and then wet sand it and it should look you know a thousand times better than it even did before it orange peeled so uh, yeah I'm gonna grab those and I'm gonna get to it because I want that thing looking nice and I want it sealed back on here so I can run the car again and bleed the system out uh it had a little bit of air in the system after a coolant leak that i discovered so uh 
got that coolant leak all taken care of and now I'm just letting it get back up to temperature and making sure it runs well. So. So I got the uh, cold side pipe all trimmed up and I put in the Z32 map and then I wired up the Z32 map. So those are all in there. Uh, I don't have confirmation that the Z32 map works yet because I haven't tried to crank the car with the ECU that's supposed to run it, but um, it should be good. I follow the diagram so I shouldn't have any issues with it. Um, up here I got my 370cc SR injectors, so I have to swap those in here. And then I have to switch over my lower oil pan that has the turbo feed on it that I'm waiting to get from Tyler. So once I get that all taken care of, I can start this thing up. And then I actually traded one of my lower harnesses for a KA rad and an S14 seat. So I'm gonna get this SR radiator out of here and put in the KA radiator so I don't have to worry about trying to find a solution to get this pipe routed to this pipe when I just have this one. So I'm gonna get that all swapped around and then that'll be good to go. I also have to run over to the gas station and grab some gas for the 240 because it just ran out. So I'm gonna go grab some 93 and put it in the tank and make sure I got the system bled out. So now that I know this is running all good without any more coolant leaks, um, it's time to keep on tying everything up. So yesterday I got the door seals put back in. I uh, got those all sealed up, so that's all good. And then um, I have to take care of things in terms of the fenders. So the uh, frame rail is really pinched down there. Um, so the fender's not like lining up flush the way it should so I just have to take that off and pound that straight and then it should line up again and then I have my harness tucked up along here so it's not allowing the fender to sit as flush as it needs to so I have a wire harness tape over here that I ordered off Amazon and uh, I'm just gonna take the loom off and wrap it a little bit tighter so it uh, clears the fender so um, that's a little project for the 240 today so I can continue getting the front end wrapped up and then there's a little bit of a bumper sag there but all i got to do is lift it up and then fasten it so um that should be all good there and then i pretty much have to do the same thing to this side in terms of straightening out the uh the frame rail um but the the harness tucks up just fine on this side so that's all good so uh, i'm gonna get to that and uh yeah i'll put it on a time lapse and you guys can see how i do it So I got both fenders adjusted and I got them up to line up. I got them to line up a whole lot better than they were before. So it's not quite there, but it's pretty close. And considering these fenders have probably been on six different cars in their lifetime, it's not too bad. So um, the final adjustments will be made when I get the hood, of course, because um, I really want to get an OEM hood. I'm not really trying to get a fiberglass or a FRP hood. I'm just not trying to deal with any of that stuff. And once I get my kinetics manifold modified, it should be low enough to clear any OEM hood that I want to get. So, um, so yeah, it's pretty good for now. And uh, the car runs, it drives, there's no coolant leaks. So, uh, yeah, it's just going to be more tying up all the little small odds and end things um, to get there. Um, one thing that I did notice is a problem is that my brakes aren't working properly. Now, my fluid is a little low, but I don't really think that would make it so they don't function as they should. Um, I took the OEM... Uh, check valves from the KA and I put them on here and I thought that that would have worked but for whatever reason it's not so I'm guessing the vacuum might be the vacuum might be too much for this uh for this KA hose and I have a feeling it might be uh kind of sucking it in on itself and not doing what it's supposed to when I uh apply the brakes um because I have seen that before with uh thinner lines that aren't recommended for vacuum pressure and stuff the line will just kind of suck in on itself and uh, nothing will get through. 
So um, kind of just suffocating your brake booster at that point. So um, I'm going to uh, switch back to my old setup and see if that makes a difference. Top off the reservoir, of course. Probably got to bleed the brakes a little bit more because my younger brother didn't want to help when we were doing it. So he, uh, you know, he did a pretty poor job helping me. So uh, yeah, we're gonna leave that there. And then uh, I'm gonna move over to this and I'm going to swap in the radiator and throw in the in uh, injectors so I can get those two wrapped up. And then at that point, all I have to do is switch out the oil pan and then get the turbo oil lines routed. So, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna take care of that. And then once I get that taken care of, then I'm probably gonna wrap it up and go inside. So get to that, show you guys, and then we'll go from there. Alright, so the SR injectors are in, and those are all secure, so that should be good to go. Um, the only thing I have left to do, really, is uh, get a serpentine belt, and then swap out the oil pans. Uh, still waiting to get my oil pan from Tyler, and then once I get that, I can get the uh, turbo feed down to that, and then I can get that over to my sandwich plate, and get that all taken care of. Um, just a bunch of odds and ends stuff at this point, but I want to get the thing at least running. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to try to tackle that tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the morning. And we're back. So I'm gonna get my old oil pan torn off here. I'm gonna get the oil filter off, put the sandwich plate on, and then get the new oil pan on there. Uh, once those are on, then I can run my turbo lines from the bottom of the turbo to the top of the turbo. So here we go. Okay, so the oil pan's on, the oil's in the car, everything's sealed up, turbo lines are on. The only thing I have now is to get the uh, fuel pump in. So I gotta make sure I have my lines put in the right way, because the last thing I'd want to do is uh, get the uh, pump put in here backwards. But I do have everything strung up with some new soft lines um, connecting to the hard lines. So I'm gonna connect that after my hockey game because, well, I gotta go. So um, yeah, once that's done, it should be good to uh, to just crank over and make run. Now I currently do have the um, just the stock ECU in there, so I do have to switch to my RS uh, ECU, but that's just inside, so I'm gonna grab that and put that in, and it should make everything run properly. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. Okay, let's up with you guys in a little bit. All right, so I went over to Starbucks, got myself a nice chai latte with vanilla, can't forget the vanilla. Um, ran into some bad drivers, cause you know, Florida. Uh, I picked up some vacuum lines, connected the wastegate to the throttle body, and then I did up some of the other vacuum leak uh, things. So um, now that it's at the point it's at, with the alternator belt on, I should be able to start this thing up and keep it running as long as the MAF is done up properly. So I guess this is the moment of truth to see if the MAF is on there properly, because now it should stay on. So let's see what happens. All right, so it runs, but um, in the process of getting everything ironed out, I ended up having to take off the whole intake manifold to chase down a coolant leak. So um, right now I have on the top half of the manifold because I'm tucking the harness underneath it because it looks a whole lot cleaner. Um, so currently, yeah, that's just what I'm working on. So I took off the uh, original loom 
and I pulled a little bit more, you know, a little bit more uh, wires out on each injector plug so they're not being pulled taut or anything. This second one here, I need to get a little bit more slack on. Um, but yeah, other than that, you just gotta uh, splice out this wire to go over to this ground over here. And uh, once that's all taken care of, then it should all line up pretty well. Um, I have wire harness tape, wherever it is, right here. Get it on Amazon pretty cheap, so I just wrapped it up afterwards. And it should be good to go. Um, I am going to paint my manifold, so I'm not going to put that back on right now. But I am going to seal my valve cover back on and keep on messing with this stuff. I did get an oil pressure gauge put in while I had all this stuff off, so that's good as well. But um, the coolant leak that I'm dealing with here is... Uh, this old pipe right here, they had it in here still just because I think they didn't want to like bypass all the extra stuff, but I do want to run heat, so I am just going to run the, uh, the heater line straight from the thermostat housing to the back of the manifold right here, um, but of course on this clean one that I'm going to paint. So the uh, thermostat housing runs to right here, and then this runs to the return line of the uh, heater core. So then, uh, yeah, I'm going to get that all hooked up because I want to be able to have heat in my car. Um, and yeah, once that's all done, then hopefully I don't have any more leaks. Um, it's kind of been a pain, to, uh, like chasing it around all day and then getting to the point where I finally decided to just take off the manifold because it was dumping out. And I probably could have saved a whole lot of time and gotten more done had I just decided to take the manifold off initially. But it is what it is. Um, I have like three manifolds and this one appears to have been powder coated and cleaned up really, really well. So I'm going to paint it since it's already clean and then I'm going to put this one in. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get paint in the morning and take care of that. But for now, I'm just gonna keep on wrapping up what I'm working on and then uh, catch up with you guys in the morning. So it runs as you guys saw, but in the process of it running, you guys saw that it was misfiring, running on two cylinders, leaning out when you would put any sort of uh, you know throttle response on it. So um, now that it's running and it's not misfiring, um, I got my water pump belt, I got some new NGK BKR7s uh, to go in there to try to help with it leaning out, and I uh, got some RTV because still chasing coolant leaks. So um, I think the last thing I have to take off is the thermostat neck. So I'm going to take that off, seal that, and it should be good.